Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me again in this lesson number 37 of the Java Fundamental Stream. So, we discussed today about decks and maps. And yes, you've heard me well, it's pronounced a deck and not a DQ, even though you will hear people about DQs, it's um, officially pronounced deck. And it's one of the collections of the Java Collection Framework that we'll discuss in the today's lesson. Uh, if you are watching the event live, don't forget that you have the live chat there and I always have an eye on the live chat so you can ask me the questions directly. And if you don't um, see the event live, if you uh, watch the recording afterwards, you can still ask me the questions in the comment section or you can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter and you can ask me the questions there and I will um, try to answer them as uh, fast as possible, either in a separate video or in one of the next lessons depending on your question. So uh, in the previous couple of lessons we have already discussed the part of the Java Collections framework and we have discussed about uh, lists and about sets. Um, a big part of it of course we have methods that we didn't discuss because they are related either to the Java functional interfaces which we'll discuss probably in the next lesson uh, or with uh, the Java streams which, are very, which is actually a very complex subject. Um, that will um, touch you in more, or, uh, more, more than one of the next lessons. So uh, uh, it's, I know it's not everything yet, but we've uh, covered a lot of the things and I'm, I hope that at least uh, up to now you um, know what a list is, what a set is, what's the difference between a list and a set and implementations for each of them with the important, um, uh, let's see, the impl important implementations for lists, which are the array list and the linked list, the, implement, uh, the uh, uh, important implementations of sets, which are the hash set, the linked hash set and the tree set and the interfaces, the contracts that represent them, they are really important um, uh, uh, also uh, for real world scenarios, for, for your um, applications uh, you are working on um, uh, at work, but uh, also for the, the OCP 11 exam and especially for the OCP 11 exam where you know that you have to learn by heart a lot of details, so that's why what I recommended you is uh, before going to the OCP 11 exam, make sure that you read and um, try to memorize uh, almost all the methods in these implementations and in these contracts. And uh, yes, I know that's not something that a programmer does in a real world, but if you want to obtain that certification, you have to do that. That's how it works. Uh, otherwise, I don't recommend you to learn by heart anything. Try to always um, learn the logic of it when you, uh, you um, just try to learn programming for um, the real world scenarios. The, the logic of, the, of it and why was it done like this is much more important than learning things by heart. Uh, that being said, and uh, we've done a short recap on what we have already discussed, uh, we can go further and write our first example to see what a deck is and what you should know about a deck. And um, uh, then we will discuss about maps uh, and uh, I think this, this is uh, everything that we'll actually cover for today. So uh, I have already created here an example, as you already know I'm doing, it's lesson number 37 and I use Java 13, which is still the latest general available, but very soon I, I will change to Java 14. And then in this uh, package example one, I will create a class example one and we will create our first deck example. And fortunately, we only need to know, at least for the OCP 11 exam, uh, one implementation of this um, kind of collection and the implementation of deck uh, that you need to know for your OCP 11 exam and probably the only one that you will use um, or the most probable one that you will also use in real world scenarios is called array deck. So it's very similar to array list but it's not a list, it's a deck and deck is different contract that we will discuss now. So public static void main is the main method where we will write our example and uh, basically what um, I uh, want to uh, um, do here is to declare a deck and try to show you some of the important um, uh, methods uh, that uh, you need to know 
uh, I won't run all of them, you know, because it would be a loss of time, but you need to know what you do with a deck. So basically you need to understand why do you use, use a deck. So here uh, I have the deck of whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You need to provide an object as a generic type and let's call it a D1. And the only implementation you need to know again is the array deck and you can declare it like this of course uh, in um, uh, the OCP 11 exam you will uh, often find it uh, declared directly using the var word because var word is available starting with java 10 so you will find it plenty of times in your OCP 11 exam uh, and of course it's not mandatory that that you use the interface since you are inside a local block here so that's why in plenty of cases you will directly find it declared um, and stored the, its reference uh, in um, the array deck uh, in a variable declared with the array deck type uh, as well but don't forget to always remember the contracts because they are really important and usually when you declare parameters of methods return types or attributes um, of uh, your uh, classes uh, you should uh, use um, uh, interfaces so you should use abstraction it's one of uh, <coughs> one of the solid principles which is called a dependency inversion which tells you that you always should depend on a contract and uh, instead of depending on an implementation but i will discuss this uh, in uh, a separate video that's for uh, the best practices the best class design practices and uh, uh, to make your application main main maintainable so that's why here when, when discussing collections i always discussed also the contracts the collection contract you know the list contract you know the set contract you know that the set contract is um, extended by the sorted set and then by the navigable set so you have have to know that here he to know in an implementation of a real world scenario what exactly should you choose from that contract to represent um, your object and here in case of decks we have the deck interface as you see here and deck is basically uh, extending queue so it is a, a more particular kind of a queue with deck uh, actually you can implement and it's pretty easy to implement what we call in data structures stocks and queues so you, you will find it pretty simple to to use this collection to implement um, the data structures called stacks and queues i will discuss about them after the contract so deck extends queue which in terms extends collection you know that collection is that contract extended all also by a list and by set so if you go here you will see well i don't know why you see it like this but it generally i would have expected you to see yeah there are, there are too many probably uh, implementations of this uh, and i i can't show them like this but you will uh, trust me uh, that um, this collection interface which is the root uh, of the uh, one element collection so it, it has only one generic type here um, it um, is the root of all the other contracts and the, the implementations for the collections with uh, one um, kind of element with one generic type as you can see here uh, so yes you see basically here they are, they are actually enumerated um, I'm not sure why map is enumerated here map is not extending collection we will discuss about it uh, later but it's part of the collection framework that's something that I, I need to tell you because I, I al always hear that complaint some um, uh, times um, uh, people starting learning Java um, reach me and ask me um, is uh, map part of the collection framework and I, I tell them yes it's part of the collection framework yes but it's not extending collection yes indeed it's not extending collection but it's part of the collection framework so uh, I, I even uh, found um, um, technical uh, interviewers uh, asking about map and uh, stating that that the map interface is not and the map implementations are not part of the collection framework and I'm sorry for you guys but map even if it's not extending collection the interface collection is part of the uh, collection framework and uh, actually to uh, prove that I have uh, already opened here the documentation for from Oracle which is for version 11 but it's uh, enough for us somewhere here after the long description of, of what map is you will find it stated this interface is a member of the java collections framework so yes maps are part of the java collection framework keep that in mind it's not extending collection 
the interface but is part of the java collection framework so don't um, uh, rush um, with um, uh, your thoughts and uh, try to to find the correct uh, the correct answer to the questions so going back in our case we said we would basically implement stacks and decks well if you go um, now to the um, uh, methods uh, that are offered by this uh, this contract you will see that we have uh, plenty of uh, methods uh, referred uh, re referring to adding um elements or retrieving elements and basically what 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 you can do and you have that's the strange part of dex i never i i've never liked it you have uh, more options to do the same operation like uh, adding an element in the collection at the beginning so you, you can add an element at the beginning and yes you have multiple options to do that you can add an element at the end of course you can retrieve an element from the beginning of the collection you uh, can retrieve an element from the begin uh, from the end you can retrieve and remove an element and uh, i think those are the most important things that you especially can do with an array deck so uh, with a deck in general so uh, being that you can add an element at the beginning uh, and add it at the end or uh, retrieve it uh, or uh, retrieve it from the beginning or from the end then this these are basically the operations that allow you to implement stacks and queues so um, if you don't remember uh, the stack is um, that kind of data structure which operates under the last in first out principle so this principle tells you that you have to add um, uh, an element uh, only uh, at one side of the the collection and you always retrieve it from that side so the last element that you have added is always the first one that you can take out last in first out the last one you add in the collection is uh, uh, the first one that you might take out and um, generally when we uh, think about uh, decks uh, you have a beginning and an end so if you if this is your deck then this is the beginning so one is at the beginning and then six is at the end but when you think about stacks in general they are they are called stacks uh, also because we um, think about them on the vertical and that's why we say that stacks actually have layers so stacks have layers and the reason is because we say that we have a layer at the the bottom and then you have a layer above it and another layer above it and each layer is basically an element you add an element at the at the, the um, very last layer of uh, uh, or very first layer of the stack the the end layer and then above it you have another element and then above it you have another element and so on and you have you can uh, have as many elements as uh, you um, uh, need uh, so uh, stacks usually don't limit you to a number of elements uh, at least um, from the um, uh, philosophy point of view uh, that's also the way the memory for the uh, local blocks work in um, uh, Java and that's why we we call, the, call that uh, um, uh, memory uh, a stack you know we have the stack overflow and uh, the, the way we store these variables which are locally so this d1 here this d2 here this d3 we say that they are stored in the stack and they are actually stored on one layer of the stack um, uh, created by the method calls and each method call creates another layer in the stack i have already described this in one of the videos you can find on this channel so if you want to to learn uh, more in detail how the stack works you will find a video about uh, stack and heap uh, right on this channel but that's why it's called a stack because it's still on layers we say that we have um, uh, stacks of layers and each layer is an element basically in case of the collection so we don't see them on the horizontal we see them on vertical doesn't matter how you see them anyway the principle is the same so you have to in case of a stack add uh, a value always on one side and always you can take it out also from that side so let's uh, say we have added a seven here seven is the only element from the stack 
we can take out now so I can take out seven and only then I can take out six and only then I can take out five and if I add one more element now I have to add it on the same side so let's say I, I've chosen the end of the collection to create the philosophy the logic of a stack I have to add an element at the end and always take it out only the last one from the end you can recreate the same logic by thinking in terms of the other side of the collection so for example if i think uh, about the adding at the beginning and retrieving from the beginning you say that i have an empty stack now i add an element and then when i add the second one in the stack i will add it at the beginning and then i add another element i will add also at the beginning always on the same side and when I have to take out an element now, the last element I have added is uh, all, always the uh, first one I can take out. So now the element that I can take out is 8, which is the first element. So it depends on which side we think, but we can implement a stack uh, either way around. And now with a deck, you have plenty of options to do this. So assume this D1 then I can use one of these uh, methods. For example, you have the add first here. I think this add first is actually inherited from the queue interface, but doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. It, um, it's part of uh, a deck uh, uh, as well because you have seen that deck actually extends queue. So you have the possibility to push an element at the beginning or you have the possibility to add it first and these two methods basically do the same thing so let's let's assume that i add here an element with a push and i do a push of three eight and nine and then um, i won't uh, show it again uh, you just can um, uh, parse uh, a deck the same way you were, were doing with a list so in my case um, because I'm using um, uh, a version that's greater than Java 8, which is uh, 13 in my case, uh, I can use the for each method and uh, system out directly. I can say like this system out print line the elements. So let's let's see in the console these elements, and I will run the. Um, I will run the um, example and you s you've seen that I have added three, eight and nine and that th those are basically the elements that we expect to see. But of course you see them, them in the other way around and the reason is push as I've said uh, adds the element at the beginning. So what happened here I have added three and now my deck my deck contains only the element three and then the next line line 24 here adds the eight where is eight added because push adds the element at the beginning eight will be here and then because nine is also added with a push after three and eight it will also be here so that's why you see them in the order nine eight three because push is adding an element at the beginning and you will basically do the same thing if uh, instead of push you would uh, use the add first so add first three and then you add first eight and then you add first nine and you will have the same result so be very careful some of the methods in deck again i don't really like this that that this happens but some of the methods in deck they actually do the same thing so uh, you will uh, you will find uh, you will find this uh, sometimes annoying but this is how it is and uh, again you have to stick with one when working on a real world scenario don't use both push and that first because doing so you will create confusion it will make your code much more difficult to, uh, to be read and under understood uh, but you have to learn them all all these options if you attend the ocp 11 exam because again in the ocp 11 exam you will find them in all the possibilities add them mix them uh, all of them all together separated doesn't matter you will find them in the, 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 that ocp 11 exam and uh, that's why uh, you have to learn all, all these details before going to the exam trust me you have to to learn them uh, by heart that that exam that that's basically what i dislike totally about the ocp exam is that it uh, asks you to learn too many things by heart which are not necessarily uh, needed to be an expert in um, in the language and in domain but that's another story 
okay so you can see i can add for i can i can add uh, for example uh, an element at the beginning with push or with add first and uh, you have seen the result and no matter uh, what you choose you can uh, you can do it like this and then of course you can remove an element and guess what you have a remove first and you have a remove last so you can remove the element uh, at the beginning and or you can remove the element at the end uh, and uh, if i use a push first uh, a push which is a net first with a remove first for example uh, that uh, will create uh, exactly an, um, a stack for me uh, the logic of a stack because i add at the beginning but i i get out also from the beginning so i i add at one side and i always take out the last element added which is from the beginning as well so you can uh, do this with the remove first maybe it's better if i comment the remove first here so remove first which will as the name suggests remove the first element and i comment it out and um, uh, similar to the remove first for push the equivalent would be uh, pop so pop takes out the element from the beginning that means in our case it will take out the nine if um, uh, if i run this example again so i have pushed three eight nine which creates my stack with elements nine eight three and then it pops out the nine so it takes out the nine and then in the console of course the nine we won't be displayed because i have printed the collection after i have pushed the three elements and then popped out the first of them so pop and remove first are um, very similar elements and by the way uh, pop actually um, returns uh, e which is uh, the um, uh, element itself so uh, let's let's say that uh, a difference would be that uh, when you call remove first oh no remove first is also returning e so i had the impression that this one is void uh, I think there is an implementation also which is void so <laughs> there are a lot of them and they are very very similar so again now all both of them they return the element so i should be able to take out the nine and also get it from the method like this for example so if i say e1 uh, take it out from pop so pop takes it out and returns the value so i can use it for example in such an algorithm that needs a uh, uh, stack i don't know backtracking or whatever you want uh, there are a lot of algorithms there that use uh, um, uh, stacks so uh, yes you can do you can do a stack like this uh, or you can do a stack by thinking on the other side of the collection so on the end so let's let's comment this out and again i i keep it like this the for each here and i will try to now add the elements at the end so let's assume that i do a d1 then i can of course add last so you you were, were expecting this already i can add last elements uh, i can use add actually simple add uh, which comes uh, inherited from the collection contract also does add uh, is adding the element at the end of the collection uh, and if i add them like this then i should see uh, 10 78 and 50 10 78 and 50 in my console of course on separate lines because i'm using print line here but that's another story so important for now is that um, we have added the elements and we see them in the correct order so yes we see a 10 a 78 and a 50 in precisely this order and the same thing you can do by um, using the offer so you have offer and you have offer last and guess what they do the same thing <laughs> they will uh, add our uh, elements at the end of the collection so uh, let's say d1 offer 78 and which was the last one 50 just to choose i i just choose to use the the same numbers to to make the correct comparison with you so 10 78 and 50 and then i parse and print out the elements of the collection in order oh uh, by the way uh, you know that uh, with collections yeah you see they are in the precise order so it's the same thing like this uh, this bunch of code here um and um, uh, I, that's a good op opportunity to to remind you also that if you print the any collection like d1 d1 oops that's not what i intend to do 
if you print it directly like this uh, so I, I've actually uh, chosen here to parse the collection and print each element one by one on a separate line but I could have chosen to directly print it like this and remember that any collection in the collections framework implements a to string so it implements the toString method and it prints nicely the collection. You can see any list, any set, if you print it directly, it's not like an array. Remember that when we were working with arrays, arrays um, are actually, yes, of course, it's an empty now because I have uh, comment, commented this, but uh, that's actually correct. And let's see them also with elements. Yes, arrays, I was saying that uh, when we were working with them, uh, you know that they don't have a toString method so um, uh, you can't actually just system out print line an array but you can do that with a collection like a list, a set or a deck or even a map because they do implement the toString so it will actually look nice and this is um, how um, a collection looks like when you print it uh, directly it's uh, only the values uh, and they are um, uh, uh, between uh, some brackets so this is basically how also a list or a set if you print them out would look like the same in the same way so yes we have offer and um, then we can uh, you, you've seen that we can add or we can remove first we, we can add last we can add last with offer and of course we can remove last uh, the elements as well so uh, uh, if you use and allow me to go to a, to a different example because I, I already I've already written a lot too much here in this example so I will uh, create a separate class example to here and I've uh, said earlier that you can use dex to create stocks and you have seen already how to create stocks and you can use dex to uh, define queues that kind of um, um, data structure where uh, you uh, add on one side but you take out from the other which is also we say we which also we say that uh, it works on the first in first out principle and uh, it stacks they were using the last in first out principle but queues are using the first in first out principle so you add one element and that will be the uh, uh, the the first one that will uh, be um, taken out it, it will be the first first one which gets in the queue so it's like like a normal queue where if you came earlier it's uh, your priority to get out as well so it's like just the opposite from the last in first out it's not the last the last was added was the first that was taken out in our case the first that was added it will be also the first to be taken out so this is how a, a queue works and you can implement um, a queue also by using a deck so uh, you simply let's say we have the array deck here oh i didn't say the array deck like the array list is backed by an array so this is why the name is uh, array deck so we can put it here like array list array deck is also based backed by an array so in the end it's only an array behind and you don't have to take care about the um, uh, size of the array the length of the array it will uh, automatically enlarge if you add more elements so you see you don't manage here the length of the array because you know that an array has a um, final length which means it's constant you can't change its length but in case of uh, lists uh, sets decks we never took into consideration um, uh, the uh, length we have created uh, an empty collection and then we have added or removed elements and is the mechanism behind this collection that manages everything but you have to know that array list and array decks these are collections that are backed by an array so it's an array behind where the elements are stored uh, this has of course advantages and disadvantages being backed by an array access to the data is done uh, very very fast um, we have uh, discussed uh, this also when uh, we've done in one of the previous lessons a short comparison between the array list and the linked list so uh, yes to uh, if you want to create a queue uh, in terms of a data structure then you have to uh, add the elements on one side but take them out from the other side so for example you can say that we use 
offer to add elements which you know it now will add the elements at the end of the collection so offer or offer last which one of them you, you would like and then whenever you take out you have to use either remove first to remove them or you have to use pop to remove them so if you use offer together with pop then you can say you are um, creating um, a queue because you add the elements at the end of the collection but you take them out from the beginning and of course you can use the other way around you can use push to put them at the beginning or at first so you can say d1 push the element at the beginning and then you can use d1 remove last you remove the element from the other side so you it doesn't matter on which side you are adding and you are removing from from the other you are still creating uh, creating a queue so uh, this is with stacks and queues and as you can see again uh, it's pretty simple to implement them with uh, a deck and again the array deck is basically the contract the, the implementation of the deck contract that you should know and you will probably um, find uh, in uh, case you need to implement something like this in a real um, a scenario in a real application but it's also the contract that you need to know uh, for your OCP 11 exam so remember array deck uh, most of the methods that you will encounter in the OCP exam are those that I have shown uh, you in this um, first two but remember that um, in the OCP 11 exam you have basically the chance to, to get any of the uh, uh, methods uh, in the class itself so that's why I always say before going to the OCP 11 exam try to, to, to learn all the methods from all the uh, collections uh, uh, implementations that we discuss here uh, and uh, their contracts uh, you won't remember them forever you will uh, uh, forget them after you pass the exam most of them but you still need to learn them for the exam if you want to pass um, with that uh, OCP uh, 11 exam so or at least that that was my experience for long years of uh, of taking a certification and then then renewing renewing it um, uh, at uh, least after uh, three or four years each time so that's how it works okay and this is basically what you what i consider you need to know at least uh, uh, for the beginning uh, about dex now we have one last uh, implementation well, one last uh, contract and implementations for that contract uh, from the uh, java collections framework that we need to discuss that are really important and you know uh, we, what, what what this about is uh, the map contract and the map kind of collection so let's create a separate package here i call it example 3 directly because i have spared already the second example <laughs> but um, yeah i think you you will understand it so i have an example 3 here and in the example 3 then i do a public static void main here and we want to discuss the map so map is a little bit different because you have two generic types and it's basically a collection of associations so it's not a collection of a simple elements as for all the others we have discussed all the others represented by contracts extending the collection interface um, are simple elements collections when we discuss maps maps are actually collections of associations so here in this case we have uh, associations of key values. So I, I should write this collection of associations. So of pairs, some, sometimes uh, we say pairs. Okay, so we have key value pairs, key value pairs. So that's why we need to provide two generic types here. So a map of, and you have to say something and something. So let's say we have a map of integer and string for for the beginning is not mandatory they are they are just normal generic types and they work just like normal generic types which means that uh, they don't need to have to be different of course uh, but um, uh, we have to provide both of them so uh, we need to have a key and a value all the time doesn't matter what this is and then we have three implementation i re implementations i recommend you to learn uh, so they are the hash map 
and you have a linked hash map and then you have the tree map so let's put them all here so we have a linked hash map and you have tree map and this is what we call the non-concurrent maps because we have also some concurrent implementations for collections but those is, uh, we'll discuss after um, uh, the discussing threads so for the moment remember that everything we have discussed uh, is basically um, non-concurrent is how we call call the objects that uh, cannot handle themselves if uh, they are uh, ran on uh, different or on multiple different threads but because we didn't discuss threads yet i didn't say anything about it and i won't say um, uh, anything about this uh, subject until we reach the uh, proper time and we discuss threads so that you can understand what um, what i want to uh, explain so for the moment uh, the only implementations that you need to to know are hash map linked hash map and tree map and um, i won't uh, spare a lot of time to to tell you the difference between them because if you have uh, seen uh, the previous lessons uh, you have um, uh, seen that we have very similar uh, names for uh, the implementations of the set collections so just for you to remember i will put them here again when we discussed sets uh, we have actually discussed about hash set, about the linked hash set and tree set. So uh, you can see that the namings uh, are very, very similar for these implementations. So we have a linked hash set, linked hash set, and we had the tree set as well. And if you remember from our past lessons, uh, you know that hash set is basically not ordered it doesn't have a defined order it's basically it, it orders the elements inside but based on their hashes it groups them uh, such that um, it uh, creates um, a proper environment for uh, finding them very fast uh, so uh, maybe the best way to refer to this is it, da it, it doesn't guarantee an order so I, I avoid saying it's not they are not ordered because basically somewhere inside the implementation of hash set has an order they it's basically the the order in which they are added uh, and stored in the collection is creating um, uh, is, is making this uh, this collection to be so fast so efficient in finding a contained uh, element but what what I want to mean by <laughs> by not order where it doesn't guarantee an order is that um, you don't have a rule from outside um, uh, in, in which you know how will the objects be stored inside so uh, they will not be in the order in which you add them they will not be sorted somehow by a, a specified rule it's basically it's, you consider them from outside as being not ordered the element the elements are um, not in a defined order or the order is only known by the insides of the, the implementation but then you have the linked hash set which uh, uh, keeps the element the elements in the order in which you added them and then you have the tree set which sorts the elements by a given rule and you know we have discussed here about the comparator which is the natural comparison rule and the, uh, sorry the comparable which is the natural com uh, comparison rule and the comparators which are objects you can provide from outside to compare and guess what maps are basically the same thing but when you see when you say order of elements is order of the key pairs so in our case we don't have an element e but we have a key, key value pair and the key value pairs in case of the hash map are not in a guaranteed order the same thing the key value pairs in case of a linked hash map will be in the order in which you've added them and in case of a tree map yes you have guessed the key value pairs will be sorted in terms of the keys so keys 
or key value pairs are sorted by their keys. This is how we should uh, keep them in mind. So uh, this being said now, let's create uh, uh, an example for so we can keep the classes clean and uh, we will um, use this, um, uh, these implementations one by one uh, and you will see how to uh, add elements in a map and also how they behave. So first of all, I'm interested to show you how to add elements in a map and to how to parse a map. So let's do this in um, example four. Example four, and I simply copied this. And to add an element, it to call the put method that takes two parameters, and these parameters are the keys and the values. Now it's important to say keys are unique. So that means that um, uh, you can't have keys duplicated. You might have uh, the value duplicated as many times as you want, but keys cannot be duplicated. So what happens here? Well, if I add something like this and then I try to have um, uh, a duplication, so I will maybe do like this. Uh, the second time I call the put method, it will find that 10 already exists and then it will override the value over the existing one. So that means that uh, instead of adding one more key pair because the key already exists, it will simply override the value for that pair. So this is why if I keep this, in, uh, this um, uh, four lines, precisely as they are now, my collection will be something like uh, key 10 will have the value www. So the last one I have added, you can see the last one added for 10 is www. So then I have 20, which is, um, which is uh, QWE and then I have um, 30, that is uh, ABC again. And yes, that, that's because you can have duplications in, uh, in values. Um, or anyway, if, even if I would actually put it like this, I will have duplication uh, in, um, in a value. So you can have values duplicated, but you don't have keys. Keys are always unique. So um, you can, and the easiest uh, way to parse a map uh, with Java 8 is to do it like this with a for each method. So starting with Java 8, we have this for each method. It uh, receives what we call a by consumer. It's called a by consumer because it receives two parameters uh, as their values. And then you can, for example, system out print line, print line them in the console, the key, let's say a space and the value. So let's, let's assume we want to print out the keys and the values on separate lines with a space between them, then I would write something like this for each key pair from the map, take the key pair and print it out in the console on a separate line, the key first and then a space and then the value. So I run this example and let's see, I do expect to have, um, to have these um, um, keys and uh, values, uh, of course, not necessarily in this order. So it um, uh, actually, you can, you can even see that the order is different and you know why the order is different because we've just discussed that hash map doesn't guarantee an order. So it will uh, just uh, keep the values inside based on their uh, hash codes to make them easy accessible. But from us, for our, from outside, we don't have an order of the elements. Of course, if I don't want to simply um, parse each of the uh, key value pair, I can with uh, as with any other collection i can uh, just uh, uh, print it out with a system out print line and yes uh, it does implement a to string method which means that uh, you will uh, see them uh, nicely the key value pairs um, unlike uh, the way a um, normal array structure works so you can see this is how the uh, to string uh, method of uh, a map um, shows the elements you have some curly braces and then you have the key equals and the value and they are separated by comma again the order 
is uh, uh, not guaranteed for a hash map so as for the hash set uh, you don't have an order guaranteed but the speed uh, uh, in which uh, the uh, value is uh, found in the collection uh, is very very fast so it's uh, that that's the great advantage of a hash map um, now if you replace this with a linked hash map of course then you will see that uh, what happens is that uh, the order in which we have uh, uh, defined the, the key pairs is kept so uh, the linked hash map similar as uh, a linked hash set works will keep the order in which the um, uh, pairs were added by me so we will first see this one but of course instead of abc you will see www see because i have added the key first it will remain first but then this method basically has overridden the abc with a www because you don't you can't have duplications in keys and then the second element is the 20 which you can see here and then the third one is the 30 which you can see here and if i let's say i don't want to uh, um, i don't want to um, remove uh, what i've written so i will copy paste this class and then change it so that you remain with all my examples i will change it to a tree set uh, to a tree map sorry and in case of the tree map now because i have uh, already the elements in the order 10 uh, 20 30 which is the natural order for numbers they will be printed in this order but uh, i can uh, always provide a um, um, comparator to uh, give uh, another order so for example i think i could use the collections reverse order here and this uh, collections reverse order uh, method the static method from the collections class will basically uh, provide me a comparator that um, makes the order opposite of the natural one which in case of numbers should be uh, the ascending um, uh, order of the numbers so 10 20 and 30 uh, and when i run this example what i expect uh, is to see the numbers in the um, the keys in the descending order so it's a 30 and then it's 20 and then uh, is 10. Of course their values ha remain associated with the correct keys uh, so uh, that's why we say that um, uh, the key pairs are in the uh, order i don't refer to the keys so the key is actually compared but the uh, the entire pair is moved to a different place in the collection so this is uh, how it works and remember this uh, this works precisely as um, uh, with uh, the sets uh, you remember when we have used three set uh, if we provide uh, an object that's not uh, comparable uh, and we don't provide provide a comparator then it will throw an exception is the same thing that will happen in case of a map if the key is not comparable so let's try to prove this because uh, it's something that uh, you might find in your uh, um, OCP 11 uh, exam um, questions and um, I'm pretty sure actually that's a great chance to see them because I have um, I've got that question a couple of times in the past years so uh, it's a great chance so let's uh, change a little bit the um, uh, syntax the using the var word that you will uh, find again pretty often with the ocp 11 exam i have i need a tree map and i will create uh, as in the previous uh, lessons a class called cat and my cat class has an uh, let's say has an age to make it simpler and i will create the getters and the setters i don't implement the comparable so now but maybe maybe i will uh, i will need uh, a constructor for the age to make it easier for me to create the instances but anyway i have a cat class with an age and then only the constructor the getters and the setters because it doesn't implement comparable these instances cannot be compared and because they cannot be compared an uh, sorting algorithm like the one in the tree set or in the tree map will fail uh, because they won't know how to compare the instances so what happens here 
is that if I uh, create a, a map of uh, cats and um, and something of course because it's a map so uh, let's say I associate the names of the cats with the cats uh, now I have um, actually um, a couple of problems uh, one is that the cat is not uh, does, doesn't uh, um, override the equals method and you know that the default equals method it actually refers directly to how um, uh, the uh, equal equal operator works between objects that is uh, it compares the references in the memory which is something that you will never have in a real world scenario so that's why remember anytime you use a, a set or a map uh, do uh, override your equals and hash code and the second one uh, is um, uh, the second problem I have is that it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, override the, um, it, it doesn't provide a rule for com uh, for comparing the objects that that would be uh, by either uh, implementing comparable or by providing from outside the comparator so I have none of this which means that I expect because it's a tree map and the, it wants to sort the uh, keys I expect it to fail so I will uh, put my uh, instance let's say I put at least Tom, uh, uh, two, uh, two instances a Tom and a Leo these are um, two names of kids I like and then I try to print them actually I will not parse them I will directly print the M1 here so we run it and I expect it to fail on this line 10 here so my expectation is that first first time when uh, the, um, I call the put method to to add um, a key pair it will fail see line 10 precisely where I expect it to, to happen and it fails with the same class cast ugly exception you know that uh, we discussed in the uh, past lesson as well and uh, you know that this actually means that um, uh, if I didn't provide a, com a comparator automatically the three map algorithm tries to cast this to a comparable which is implementing the natural order but because it's neither a comparable neither, neither we provide a comparator it will fail saying something like I don't know how to compare um, these uh, objects and uh, tree map uh, like tree set um, needs uh, a rule for um, comparing the objects to be able to sort them so you know you know uh, which are the solutions you either provide here a comparator you can provide a comparator from outside or you have to uh, implement comparable and let's implement comparable for our type and with this occasion let's also um, define the um, uh, equals uh, and um, uh, hash code method considering that our uh, objects are uh, equal if they have the same age I just have chosen this uh, and um, override the compare to and that's pretty simple you know I will say that um, I will compare the kids by age so two kids are equal if they have the same age uh, or one is bigger it, if it has a bigger age so uh, we can simply um, uh, compare the ages for this and uh, if I uh, do this and run again the same example without changing anything then we should be able to see that uh, actually the map uh, works and the two cats are there um, and uh, because uh, we didn't uh, uh, override the toString method we will see the ugly toString method default implementation but uh, we know that it worked and we have the two cats uh, in uh, our map so this is the first one which uh, the first instance uh, to which we have associated the value Tom and this is the second instance to which we have associated the value Leo and we could um, uh, do this because um, we um, um, we have uh, overridden uh, the um, compare to method and so we have provided a way to compare the instances uh, we still have to discuss a lot more on collections so I don't say I uh, I've ended with the collections but um, be before going into more details uh, uh, I would like you first to take uh, these fundamentals of the collections and learn them as they are 
Uh, in the next lesson, uh, we'll discuss uh, on the um, functional interfaces provided by Java starting with Java 8. Uh, this is, um, uh, th these are interfaces you find in the Java Util uh, function package. They are very important uh, to be known before discussing about Streams API. API. And uh, uh, we will discuss uh, them in the next lesson. And then uh, just after, uh, after that, we will um, uh, go deeper um, into collections by learning how to use the um, Stream API. So that's uh, that's the plan for uh, for the next lessons. But uh, in order to understand what will uh, what will be doing in the next uh, two lessons, uh, you need to know these basics of collections we have discussed in um, in uh, this lesson and in the previous couple of les lessons. So everything we have discussed about lists, uh, sets, deck and maps and their implementation, we've discussed about array list, linked list. Uh, hash set, linked hash set, tree set, hash map, linked hash map, and tree map, um, and uh, we'll um, again continue with uh, details on collections. But first of all, you at least need to know these details we have discussed uh, in, um, in these past three or uh, four lessons. So uh, I leave you with this information for now, and hope to see you again uh, for the next lesson where we discuss the functional interfaces. Uh, which are really important uh, for you to know uh, before diving into stream uh, api thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much for being here with me and uh, hope to see you soon have a great time for studying